We got such a great response from the $1 bill analysis episode. I showed you all of the artwork and symbols on the $1 bill, even the presence of some spiders that are etched clandestinely in the borders. So today we are going to be looking at the $5 bill and the $10 bill. I'm Julie Hartman and this is Timeless. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to Timeless. I hope that you're having a great week. Just a reminder to hit the subscribe button down below so that you can stay notified every time I post a Julie Noted News video or a Timeless episode. And also be sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Julie R. Hartman. Now I've done it again, folks. You know from the $1 bill episode that it is a new hobby of mine to take out a magnifying glass and closely scrutinize and analyze the pieces of art that we all keep in our pockets, not knowing or appreciating that they are indeed pieces of art. Well, I was focused on the $1 bill a few episodes ago, and now we are going to do the five and the $10 today. Now you may wonder, why am I putting these two episodes together and not just doing separate five and separate 10? Well, these bills are actually kind of uh, tethered together in some ways. They complement each other um, in some of their designs. And one of the biggest ways that one could argue they, they complement each other is that Alexander Hamilton was originally on the $5 bill, which now has President Lincoln, and President Lincoln was originally on the $10 bill, which now has Alexander Hamilton. And of course, all bills are tethered together in the sort of unsettling fact that uh, according to our government, 90% of all U.S. paper money has cocaine residue on it. Can you believe that? It is corroborated by many sources that that is in fact true. So let's start here with the $5 bill. Each bill is so unique in its design and the symbols that they have in it. And I know I, I've said it before, I can't say it enough. Each of them are really national treasures and pieces of art. There are 2.8 billion $5 bills currently in circulation. If you took every $5 bill in circulation in the United States and added them all up, well, you would be worth $15 billion. Each bill, like the $1 bill, has a around 5.5 year lifespan. So looking at this dollar, or excuse me, $5 bill that I have in my hand, this is a series 2013, which means that this guy is about double past his expected lifespan. Starting off with the history of the bill, as I mentioned, Alexander Hamilton used to be on the $5. That original banknote was designed in 1861, and there was Alexander Hamilton on the left, and then there was a, uh, a statue, not the Statue of Liberty, but a different statue representing freedom on the right. It's fun to go back and look at those old banknotes because their design looks really different, kind of otherworldly compared to the uh, standard banknotes that we are used to now. Lincoln was put on the $5 bill in 1914. And we see that on the opposite side of the $5 bill, there is a uh, picture of the Lincoln Memorial. Well, in 1914, Lincoln was on the front but on the back was actually a depiction of Christopher Columbus sailing into the New World and another depiction of pilgrims dating back to the time of Jamestown and the colonial days of our country. In subsequent years, they redesigned that to put the Lincoln Memorial. The most recent redesign actually happened in 2007 and then the bills went out in circulation in 2008. And among other things, the designers of these bills, uh, the people in our government and also in the Bureau of Engraving, which is another uh, federal entity, among other things, they added this big purple five, which is present on the back of the $5 bill. And this was in order to help those who might be visually impaired to very clearly be able to identify a $5 bill. So let's go back here to the portrait on the front of President Lincoln. This was actually a photograph, but they called it in those days taking a, a portrait of someone, even though it wasn't a painting. And it was done by the famous American photographer, Anthony Berger. Now, interestingly, apparently our dear President Lincoln didn't very much like being photographed. 
In fact, there is a legend which could be made up like some other stories about presidents or could be true. It, it is believed to be true that when President Lincoln was posing for his photo to be on the penny, President Lincoln is on the penny in addition to the $5 bill, his photographer was a little bit too chatty with the great emancipator, as many call President Lincoln, and was taking too much of the president's time. And so apparently, President Lincoln, in order to speed along the process, told the photographer that he was having these invasive thoughts of something that was really bad and, un and uncomfortable. And apparently the president kept saying this over and over, I'm having these really awful bad thoughts. And so the photographer shut up, stopped chatting, and very quickly took some pictures of the president in order to catch him at a moment when his facial expression wasn't looking perturbed. Well, it turns out, if it is true, that it was just a farce that President Lincoln was making up in order to get along with it. And apparently, the uncomfortable bad thing that the president was thinking of was of a bug that had too many legs. Just a tidbit for <laughs> your enjoyment. But uh, nevertheless, the president looks very principled, certainly not perturbed in this portrait of him, which was done, it, taken, I should say, in 1864. So this was taken right in the middle of the United States Civil War. And crucially, it was taken about a year after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation on January 1st, 1863. The Emancipation Proclamation totally changed the United States Civil War by putting the moral issue of slavery at the center. We often forget in 2023 that actually the Civil War began as an economic and political dispute that had something to do with slavery, but it wasn't the entire picture. Southern states thought that Northern states in general controlled too much commerce, had outsized representation in United States Congress, and certainly slavery had a bit to do with that. But by issuing the Emancipation Proclamation in which President Lincoln declared that slaves in the Confederacy, quote, are and henceforth shall be free, he put slavery at, at the center of, of the Civil War. And so it is no coincidence that this portrait was chosen as the portrait of Lincoln to be put on American money, because it was taken at a time when our president stood on principle. Here we see him looking stern. He looks serious but optimistic, and he is gazing forward, seeming unwavering in his commitment to righteousness. So moving on from the portrait, we see to the right of Lincoln, there is the great seal of the United, the United States, which I analyzed in the $1 bill episode. It's just a beautiful piece of art that we as Americans should all know about and feel proud of. It features an eagle, which is, of course, our national animal, <laughs> or the, a symbol of the United States, and eagles signify a sense of knowing because they fly above the rest of us and look down. Also, eagles are strong and valorous. And in his, um, in his mouth, the eagle is holding a sign which says, E Pluribus Unum. That is one of our national credos out of many one, out of many people, backgrounds, religions, ethnicities. We are all one American group. Also, on the breast of the eagle, we see uh, 13 vertical and 13 horizontal stripes that are rotating between blue and white and red. Of course, the number 13 has outside, outsized excuse me, significance in the United States because it is a nod to the original 13 colonies. Also, a really fun fact that I discovered doing the $1 bill episode is that even our national credo, E Pluribus Unum, has 13 letters. That's, I think, the hand of God, certainly a, a divine nod to the United States. Now, in the talons of the eagle, are, they hold uh, some pretty significant things. In the right talon, the eagle holds 13 olive branches, signifying peace. And in the left talon, the eagle holds 13 arrows signifying war. So acknowledging that we have to deal with both uh, as a country. Now the eagle looks to the right and his dominant hand is the one holding the olive branches, which signifies that the United States prefers peace over war and is more committed to peace 
than just about anything else. So we see that this great seal is superimposed on the $5 bill. And also we see an arc of stars, which is also present on the obverse, or excuse me, the reverse of the great seal on the $1 bill. We see those, that design of stars. The arc of stars, of course, is a nod to providence, the role that God or a higher being may have played in the founding of the United States. According to a lesser known founding father, Charles Thompson, the arc of the stars quotes, quote, denotes a new state taking its place and rank. So all of these symbols that we see, or almost all of them, certainly the great seal and um, the uh, re reverse of the great seal, they were designed by our founding fathers. So we have such a tie today to those people that we can look down and see a symbol that they spent so much time and energy um, trying to construct. Another cool feature on the $5 bill, among many others, is that if you really squint and look closely, there are many yellow, really, really small zero fives to the left of uh, the portrait of President Lincoln. These fives are also, or O fives, are also on the back to the right of the, the Lincoln Memorial. This, these uh, zero fives actually make up a pattern, which is called the Urion. It resembles the Orion constellation that we know exists in space. And the fives are actually supposed to resemble that constellation. But there are some more zero fives here on this, on this uh, banknote than actually are needed in order to rese resemble the Orion constellation. So what they do is that, and we can't even see it with our, with our own eyes, it takes photocopying to see this, certain threads in the banknote are actually blue. And the ones that are blue uh, resemble the Orion. So this is in order to prevent people from passing a counterfeit $5 bill. When a $5 bill goes through a machine to uh, assess its validity, the machine scans for these threads, which represent the Orion constellation. Now it's nicknamed the Urion constellation, E-U-R-I-O-N, because this constellation is also on the Euro. Then we see here the uh, seal of the treasury that is on every United States um, uh, paper money. And we see that the, the treasury seal is in green and then superimposed on that is the written number of the bill. So here we have five, F-I-V-E, spelled uh, superimposed on top of the, the treasury seal. And we see that the treasury seal and the great seal of the United States with the eagle and President Lincoln are all encompassed in that arc, the stars, which shows that our great president and the institutions of our government are tied together in this divine providence. So let's look at this serial number. You may remember from my $1 bill episode that the serial number starts with a letter which signifies which Federal Reserve Bank that the serial number or that the bill was printed in followed by a bunch of uh, a, a unique pattern of numbers. Well, the way that the serial number works on the $5 bill is a bit different. And this is done purposefully to make it really difficult for people to make counterfeit $5 bills. Because think about it, all of the uh, imagery is different, the art is different, and even they design the serial numbers differently. So here on the $5 bill, there are two letters and then a bunch of numbers. The first letter corresponds to the year in which this banknote was printed. So every, every few years, they roll out a new batch of these notes. So in 2013, they attached the letter M to all of the banknotes that were printed in that year. 2017 is assigned to the number N. So here we see I'm having, I have a 2013 banknote and we see it starts with M, which indicates that it was in 2013. The second letter indicates which Federal Reserve Bank this, uh, doll or this $5 bill was printed in. There are 12 Federal Reserve Banks in the United States, and they all have a letter attached to them. So J, I looked it up, this one I have, is actually attached to the Federal Reserve Bank in Kansas City, Missouri. That's really cool.
that this bill that I'm holding here in Los Angeles, California, originated 10 years ago in Missouri, and it was just passed hand to hand enough times and made it thousands of miles across the United States to get in my lap right now. And so then we see there's a, the, uh, a repetition of the letter of the Federal Reserve and then a number that just is more of a security addition to indicate where that banknote was printed. Finally, on all uh, banknotes here, we see that there is a kind of webbed imagery that is on the perimeter. This is true of the $1 bill. This is true of the $10, $20, all, all of them, as I said. Why? Why does it look like there are some spider webs surrounding American money? Well, that was done purposefully. Spiders actually were kind of adopted as a national symbol on money. Why? Because spiders are industrious. They're always building at a very fast rate, like the United States, and they design webs that are flexible, but also sturdy. So it makes sense that this may be a, a possible uh, animal number two. Of course, the first one is the eagle, but maybe the spider is the second uh, mascot, <laughs> if you will, of the United States. And as I teased in the introduction, if you look at the $1 bill on the front, there are two little, little, little spiders that you would need a extra effective magnifying glass to see. And then finally, on, on the front of this paper, there is a watermark that is on the right, to the right of the Great Seal, and it's a five that you can only see if you spill water on it or hold up to a light. And again, just an extra security precaution because you would be surprised how many people try to make counterfeit money. So let's go to the back, which is pretty fast because there's not as much going on on the back as in the front. It depicts the Lincoln Memorial. So we see this, this $5 bill is honoring Lincoln in every way. There are 26 states on the front of the Lincoln Memorial. That's true in real life. If you go there, the, the front facade has 26 states. And then when you rock around, there are 48 states that are engraved on the front in total. So on this $5 bill, we see 26 states. Again, you can take a magnifying glass and you can, you can read it. They, don't, they do not leave out details in designing these things. They don't just try to uh, depict a close representation of the Lincoln Memorial. They literally, in the tiniest font possible, hand write each of the states that appear in real life on the front of the Lincoln Memorial. I mentioned that there is this purple five which is to help the visually impaired to be able to see the $5 bill more easily. And then as with every US paper money bill, there is one of our national credos, in God we trust. Okay, so that's the five. Now let's go on to the 10, which is similar in some ways, of course, different in many others. But I told you about that interesting kind of swap where Lincoln was originally on the $10 and then now Alexander Hamilton is on the $10. The first $10 bill was issued in 1862. It had Lincoln on the left and then an allegorical figure or uh, representation representing art of all things on the right. In 1869, the bill was redesigned to include a former Secretary of State and former US Congressman serving for Massachusetts and New Hampshire, Daniel Webster. He was on the left and then a depiction of Pocahontas, who is actually on the right. So you can see how much these banknotes have changed over the past 150 years. But the $10 bill, as we know it now, was issued in 1929 with founding father, first secretary of the treasury, and of course, future subject of a major musical, Alexander Hamilton on the front. So this is a portrait that was painted of Alexander Hamilton in the late 1700s, because of course back then you didn't have photographs. And he is one of two non-United States presidents to de be depicted on paper money. The other is Benjamin Franklin, who is on the $100 bill. Alexander Hamilton is also the only person on United States paper money who was not born in the United States or in the United States colonies. He was born in the 18th century in the British controlled West Indies, which again makes sense because he is a founding father. So the United States wasn't even formed at the time that he was born, though Benjamin Franklin was born in the United States colonies. So this portrait 
all of these portraits have very interesting backstories. This portrait of Alexander Hamilton was actually commissioned by some members of the Chamber of Commerce in New York because Alexander Hamilton, just to add to uh, his list of many accomplishments, opened the first bank of New York, which managed all of the money and finances for the state of New York. So these members of the Chamber of Commerce commissioned a great artist to paint this portrait of this individual who had done so much for the country and for the state of New York. And not unlike President Lincoln, Alexander Hamilton was kind of uncomfortable with the idea. He didn't like being the center of attention. And so he capitulated to the Chamber of Commerce members' lovely gesture, but he insisted that the artist not paint him in a way that, quote, revealed anything about my political career. He just wanted to be painted like a regular old guy. So to some, the painting may seem boring, but it has certainly had its utility because the, the uh, head of it is on our $10 bill. You can also see that painting in the New York City Hall. You can see the painting of Washington that appears on the $1 bill in the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. So you see here, to the right of Alexander Hamilton, there is the uh, phrase, we the people, which is the preamble to the Constitution. And I would say is kind of like the fourth unofficial national credo of the United States. The three uh, affirmed national credos of the United States are liberty, e pluribus unum, and in God we trust. But that statement or that phrase, we the people, obviously has such outsized importance in how we view ourselves as a nation, how we ought to be governed by our consent, that the designers decided to put it on the $10 bill. We see on the left of Alexander Hamilton that there is a depiction of the torch held by Lady Liberty. And what I think is so fun about this or, or interesting is that the torch is lit. And I love the way that they designed that fire. It gives a sense of vitality and energy to this symbol. And also reminds us that a fire can be very quickly extinguished if we do not watch over it and seek to maintain it. The symbol was clearly very significant to the people who designed the bill that they actually put it on the front twice. We see it in its big form to the left of Alexander Hamilton, but then we see a much smaller version of it to his right. These are also depicted in the color orange, which is another fun tidbit about all of these uh, banknotes. The $1 bill pretty much has the color green in all of its depictions. The $5 bill has those yellow zero fives on the front and on the back, and then we have the purple five. And then here, the $10 bill has a lot of orange in it just to keep it interesting for us to look at money. Also, I've mentioned the uh, prevalence of our national, both official and unofficial, credos on paper money. And there's a variation of them across different paper money. The $1 bill, for instance, has e pluribus unum out of many one. It has in God we trust, but it also has annuit coeptus, which means providence has favored our undertakings. That was one of the main lines from a Roman poet Virgil that the founding fathers loved and applied to the founding of our country. The $1 bill also has Novus Ordo Seclorum on the back of the bill, which is another unofficial national credo, which means a new order for the ages, also stated by the Roman poet Virgil. And then the $10 bill has In God We Trust and We the People. Let's turn over to the back of the $10 bill it shows the US Treasury building in Washington, DC. <laughs> and what I love about these uh, bank notes is that they always label who the person is on the front and they always label what the depiction is on the back because they know, sadly, most Americans will not be able to recognize it. I would blame a lot of Americans for not being able to recognize the Lincoln Memorial. I can't say that I would blame many Americans for not being able to identify the US Treasury building. I may be one of those Americans who may not be able to identify it myself. And then the final fact that I'll give to you about the $10 bill is that it is nicknamed the sawbuck because a sawbuck, if you Google it and see what that is, because we don't use them very much anymore, has looks like an X and the Roman numeral X is 10. 
Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode, a look at some great pieces of national art that we all have uh, access to. Hopefully we have a lot of access to them because then that means we would have a lot of money in our pockets. I will see you all soon on this program. Take care. <laughs>